Hi, Roy here on my channel Roy Reads Anything and recording this late in January so coming up to February where there is going to be the fabulous Holmes is Where the Heart Is event which I've done a video about my plans for that before um, a tag has appeared as well so I put all the details down below of the um, hosts and so on and this tag I saw on Mark's channel, book time with Elvis. So the prompts are Holmesian. The prompts relate to Sherlock Holmes in some way. The answers are whatever fits the uh, whatever fits the prompt. That's the plan. So diving in. Prompt number one: Elementary, my dear Watson. Share a classic mystery novel that you consider a must read. Okay, I'm gonna say The Deadly Percheron by John Franklin Bardin. So this was, it's a kind of a psychological thriller. Very strange, you know, it's, you could imagine a David Lynch movie coming out of it. Um, and I think I read this in a, a book that had three of his novels in and they're all good i thought this was the best one uh, so uh, yeah that's my recommendation might not be too well known the deadly percheron um it's a big horse a big delivery type dray horse um and uh yeah the the protagonist might be crazy so that's a that's a thing uh, so that's that one. Num okay. Prompt number one. Um, prompt number two, Baker Street Irregulars. Recommend a book with a group of unlikely heroes or a diverse ensemble cast. So my pick for that is called 14, the number 14. And the author is Peter Kleins. Uh, it's actually the first in a series, but it works as a standalone. So the setup is a guy moves into an apartment house and number 14 is a mysterious locked room. And the diverse ensemble cast are other people who live in the apartment house. And when that room is finally explored, wild science fictional lovecraftian science fictional things happen that's that's the one with the green the green bugs things um, in it, yeah it? yeah green yeah yeah so it's great really because you can read it or in our case listen to it um leave it there or press on with the other novels which are varied uh, but some of those people show up again in different roles. So, yeah, 14, Ooh, Peter Collins. Yes. Oh, yeah. I recommend it too. Good. Um, okay, number three. The Game is Afoot. Name a book that had a plot twist or revelation that completely surprised you. Uh, just going to say The Wasp Factory by Ian Banks. Not going to say anything else. People who read it will know. People who haven't, I'll, I will not offer the slightest, the slightest hint of spoilerage. Uh, number four, two two one B Baker Street. Talk about the time you visited somewhere of literary significance. King making stone. King in, making stone. Um, uh, Scotland. Scotland. Argyle and Butte. Okay, we've um, got pictures of that. We have got pictures of that, and it was it, it's it's a footprint cut into a stone where ancient kings used to have to put their foot to be made kings. Foot movement is happening. What you can see is actually a concrete cast of the original, which is underneath. Um, but um, it featured it's a, in... It's a pastiche. <laughs> it is a pastiche. It featured in The Mark of the Horse Lord by uh, Rosemary Sutcliffe, okay. which was one of my, is one of my very, very favourite historical novels. And I cried when I put my foot mm. on the king-making stone because okay. it was just so brilliant. 
Uh, number next, Moriarty's Master Plan. Discuss a book where the antagonist was exceptionally cunning and memorable. Uh, well, this is actually three books, again, often served up as a trilogy. Uh, the Gorse Books by Patrick Hamilton. Uh, so, well, he is the, the Ralph Gorse, who is a sort of con man, uh, amoral uh, sociopath, really, with great charm. Um, the first one's called The West Pier, set in Brighton, where I'm from, that happens, but also where Patrick Hamilton lived. Um, and yeah, he's, he's like protagonist and antagonist, really. Uh, and it's a, it's a bit like those... Um, What's her name? What's her name? The Ripley one. Yes, the Ripley. Yeah. It's a bit like the Ripley books. Probably sounds like, well, why read those? Because we have the Ripley books. But Patrick Hamilton's got his own bleary take on it and on that sort of thing. And the seedy underside of life and his incisive writing is uh, something to be experienced. So Gorse. Patrick Hamilton. Not to be confused with Morse. No, no, not no relation to Inspector Morse. That would be a good. Um... He too has a bleary sort of charm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, he, he, the the bleer is the bleer is stronger in Patrick Hamilton. <laughs> the art of deduction. Mention either a book that kept you guessing all the way to the end, or one where you guessed the outcome earlier on. Well, this is weird. So, and then there were none by Agatha Christie. Uh, I read that in uh, MJ's uh, Agatha in April event. Um, although I've seen a television adaptation, I was surprised by what happened. So, you know, somehow the, the way Christie weaves the story, plus my failing memory of what was on television <laughs> five Christmases ago, meant I was surprised. It's a classic. The Hound of the Baskervilles. Talk about a book with a strong atmospheric setting. A one where the setting plays a significant role in the story. Swallows and Amazons, yeah. Wildcat Island. Right, it's, the island in the Lake District, I think. In the Lake District, it's in a cross between Windermere and Coniston Water. Brilliant. Um, Wildcat Island. Yeah, good. Swallows and Amazons, Swallows and Amazons Arthur, Ransom, Arthur Ransom, if you haven't read them, classic children's Married books. Married Tolstoy's secretary. Not many of us can say that. No. Well, I'm saying The House Without a Key, which is the first Charlie Chan book. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to put up in writing the name of the author. Uh, so probably not widely read anymore for reasons but the charlie chan charlie chan is a detective and he lives in hawaii and obviously hawaii is the setting of presumably lots of the books uh, but this first one it's just the the evocation of the place uh you know not just thinking oh yeah grass skirts or whatever but the 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 how the town what the town's like all kinds of classes and different kinds of people how people live the the landscape the climate the attraction of being there is really powerful you could like not not care a thing about charlie chan or even like detective books and it's a it's a it's a great story great novel um, and a, it is a good it is a good detective book too the house without a key uh, next prompt, The Reichenbach Falls. Talk about a series that you thought had ended, but made a surprise comeback. I find it difficult, because most things I like, the, the follow-ons and sequels by other folks have been more or less continuous. You know, Oz continued almost without a break. Uh, Tarzan books, well, there's plenty of those. Uh, James Bond, I think the first not written by Ian Fleming was the Kingsley Amis one, but then, you know, they, they always feel they used to try and make it a big event. Uh, now John Gardner's writing John's, James Bond books. They've been fairly continuous. Conan, yep, loads of those. The one, I suppose, that as a surprise comeback, and this is really because I thought, who, who would attempt this? 
because they're not although yes they're sort of genre books but they got such a sort of level of literariness and um the hand of the author being so strong that just doing more of them seems to be perilous uh, and that's philip marlowe mm. i can understand finishing the unfinished one because it's like oh the unfinished one um but and they, they they might be great obviously i don't know but i think i just think you know, you've got this hubris in this yeah. uh doing new uh new marlowe books um well, the originals were more um atmosphere than plots yeah yeah well really. that'd be good answers to the yeah uh, <laughs> i refer you yeah. to prompt number number yeah. whatever um yes so you know don't kill me if they're like the best books ever written uh, Sherlockian adaptations. Discuss your favourite book to screen adaptation or a retelling of a classic story. Now, presumably, it doesn't have to be Sherlock Holmes. Although I would say the Jeremy Brett television Sherlock Holmes, yeah. which is yeah. actually a book about them, uh, I thought was excellent. And of all adaptations I've seen, seems to be seems to have been very faithful and very close and. Again, it was surprising people. It wasn't. He hasn't got a deer stalker on all the time. Um, how Unlike ridiculous! How husband. ridiculous would that be? How you can, you know, um, he does wear one once, but um, yes. So I would, I would say those. I, I loved Brett in the role. I actually saw him on stage once doing a Sherlock Holmes play, which was fine. But later in life, I think after his wife died, he. The heart had gone out of the fellow, really, and that was in that period. So it was. I'm glad I saw it. Um, but another another Holmes adaptation I really like is Murder by Decree. It's not an adaptation; it's a pastiche, actually, uh, with uh, Christopher Plummer and James Mason. Great film. James Mason. But if it's just a great adaptation, I think the most recent Little Women film, really. Yeah, you need to good. watch that again. Good, Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Final Lee, the great detective, recommend a book with, and this is sort of detective -y. recommend a book with a brilliant and memorable protagonist. Right, so I think I'll read the description first. So this is the first time a point of view character comes across the person I'm talking about. Uh, so he's walked into a room and seen a beautiful woman from behind. Never was the fair promise of a lovely figure more strangely and startlingly belied by the face and head that crowned it. The lady's complexion was almost swarthy and the dark down on her upper lip was almost a moustache. She had a large, firm, masculine mouth and jaw, prominent, piercing, resolute brown eyes and thick coal black hair growing unusually low down her forehead. Her expression, bright, frank and intelligent, appeared while she was silent to be altogether wanting in those feminine attractions of gentleness and pliability, without which the beauty of the handsomest woman alive is beauty incomplete. I refer, of course, to Marianne Halcom. Marianne Halcom in Woman in White. The 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 woman in white. By Wilkie Collins. The woman in white. A fantastic sensation novel from 1860s. And uh, Marian Halcom is one of the heroes. So she is resolute, determined, super intelligent and part of the... Uh, small team that uh, basically um, bring about justice in the end. Hopefully that's not too much of a spoiler. So Marianne Halcombe, as you can see, that's a pretty, that doesn't sound like a typical Victorian heroine. Um, and yet, part of, the, part of the fan craze for Woman in White. So, okay, people love this book. Um, while the novel was selling in its thousands, manufacturers were producing woman in white perfume, woman in white cloaks and bonnets, and the music shops displayed woman in white waltzes and quadrilles. You're not going to try and get the perfume now, are you? <laughs> you can't, please, yeah. please don't. I beg you. Um, some dude even um, 
Edward Fitzgerald read it three times and named a herring lugger boat. <laughs> named a boat he owned, Marianne Halcombe, after the brave girl in the story. Now, often it said yacht, which sounds a very different, but um, mm -hmm. uh, the Prince Com... Anyway, yes, so people loved the book and Marianne Halcombe was a fan favourite. Um, he was Wilkie Collins, the writer, if I haven't said that, um, it's a small wonder. Wilkie was inundated with letters from bachelors begging him to divulge her real name and address in order that they might seek her hand in marriage. So despite or because of these kind of, I guess you could definitely say gender fluid, or at least you could certainly say masculine characteristic, she was loved by, loved by many and like I say, is a great character. Uh, I'm delighted to see and can't wait for Read What You Own to finish so I can start reading uh, a Marianne Halcombe pastiche series that runs to like several books now where she, the most dangerous woman in Europe, is, is doing um, adventure detective stuff. Uh, anyway, yes, so Marianne Halcombe, uh, she's also good at billiards. Of course um, she is. And she does many heroic things. Heroic so things. for distinctiveness and um, heroic actions in the service of sensation fictions, that's what I'm saying for that one. OK, folks, that's all for now. Bye. What about back soon with something else? Oh, I'm supposed to say <laughs> I'm, I'm off brand as usual. Back soon with something else. Thank you. Ha <laughs> ha.